journalist and director of the New Culture Forum, Peter Whittle, got his chance to quiz the reprehensible Sadiq Khan over his campaign of hate against all things British at the Mayor of London's question session recently. And as you'll see, boy, did he do just that. He really goes after him on this. We all know Khan hates Britain like the rest of the woke movement does. He wants to rewrite history and attack our culture. In fact, he basically says we have no culture, so we need a mass immigration to bring us all those magnificent benefits. An incredibly racist thing to say to any country or culture. The fact that London is our capital city means any attack on its history or culture sends ripples across the rest of England. The mayor even admits to Peter that they have set up a team to review our capital's history. Even street names and great works of art will come under review. And as Peter says, they'll all follow the same woke ideology and will all come to the same conclusion that anything traditionally British is terrible and wrong and needs to be done away with. Peter, clearly a bit irascible by now, says to the mayor, isn't it true you hate Britain and any form of patriotism? Which is self-evidently true, as any fool can see. The rest of the panel pipe up, all woke Labour councillors, of course, including this awful woman who starts ranting and raving. They all demand Peter be removed if he doesn't apologise and withdraw his comments as they are a disgrace. One could hear a lot of people shouting, How dare you! Point of order! in the background. Heroically, he refuses to apologise for speaking the truth. The mayor has the cheek to ask why is he so afraid of all this? The utter cheek? Who wouldn't be afraid of an authoritarian mayor and his campaign to destroy 1500 years of your history? And as Peter Whittle says, history is history and not he or anyone else has the right to change it, especially when it is against the will of the people. We are sick of constantly being told everything about our country is evil and wrong, especially when it is a lie. Well done to Peter for sticking it to Khan, standing his ground and saying what we all think. Take a watch. Probably that they expected that they would have a mayor who saw it perfectly fine to take upon himself to judge London's heritage and past. And I would ask you, on a moral level, if not a legislative one, what right do you think you have to sit with this committee in judgment on London's heritage, which has, I would add, a British uh, significance to being the capital? Well, let me try and just unpackage the number of issues you raised there. So I think you're wrong in your analysis of the intentions of uh, parliamentarians who drafted the GLA Act. You all be aware that previous mayors have, for example, with others, decided what takes place on the fourth plinth. You'll be aware, for example, that we now have a new statue in Parliament Square from Mr. Fawcett, uh, which was, uh, you know, which uh, City Hall did a lot of work in, in getting to uh, where it is uh, today. You'll also be aware that previous mayors have made decisions around the public realm of Travaga Square and Parliament Square uh, as well. So when you talk about the intention of the GLA Act, I'm really happy for us to both explore what the intentions were, but I think you're wrong there. In relation to uh, me being the judge, I'm not. We've set up a commission which have a number of key stakeholders from across our great city who will provide an advice uh, which uh, we hope to act upon. Mr. Mr Mayor, these people on your commission, they are all going to be basically mayor's mates, aren't they? They're all going to sing from the same hymn sheet, which is an ideological one. This was born, this idea, and you announced it at the very height of the BLM protest. So basically, the incentive behind this really is one of revising and removal. Millicent Fawcett in Parliament Square was a new statue. We're not really talking about that, are we? We're talking about going back through London's past. You mentioned, in, in when you've talked about this, you said that much of London comes from a, a bygone era. Well, that would be history, Mr Mayor. You do accept that a bygone era is actually history. And I repeat, nobody, no mayor, no elected official, none of us, have the right to simply start removing and revising what has been there for centuries and centuries. And you say that, uh, I would take great issue when you say this has really uh, captured the imaginations of Londoners. It's really demoralised them. Can you not see that? Well, I can see you're demoralised, uh, but I can speak on behalf of other Londoners 
who quite like the idea of us uh, looking at public spaces. There could be street names, there could be works of art, there could be murals, there could be blue plaques, and there could be other issues as well. I'm, I'm not quite clear why you feel so threatened by I do feel uh, threatened, a public Mr. realm better I don't feel threatened at all. I, I don't. I do not feel threatened. It's not a question of that. What I do feel very passionate about is somebody basically coming in and essentially saying, I am going to, or this commission is going to start, as you put it, deciding which legacies should be celebrated and which shouldn't be. No one has the right to do that. And I think it is extraordinary at a time when this city is facing almost extinction level event economically, largely as well down to many of the things you've done, such as congestion charge and all of that, that actually now you start attacking its heritage. And the councils that you refer to are Labour ones, 130 of them up and down the country. We all know, do we not, Mr Mayor, that your party doesn't really like patriotism, doesn't really like Britain very much, wouldn't you say? That's quite a slur. Uh, but coming from me, it's no surprise. Uh, we're a very patriotic uh, party. I'm very proud of the achievements. Disgraceful, so, Chair. Yeah, Will you proud. reprimand that Assembly uh, member? That's an absolute no, disgrace. No, no, he no. should be immediately reprimanded. That's an insult to the merits, an insult to no. uh, Labour members of this Assembly. No, no, no. It, it, listen, Mr. Yes, Mayor, yes, yes. At the yes, very time, when, insult, this, uh, when, this, uh, the very time when this city is facing what it's facing, it is extraordinary that you are now concentrating on setting up something to revise its past history. Well, Chair, that's a characterisation I don't accept. Right, well, Mr Mayor, all I can say is that the one consolation is that it's very unlikely that anyone's going to be putting up a statue to you. Well, can, 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 I, can, I, can I urge, can I ask Assembly members to be respectful, not play dirty party political games here. This is not, let me finish, Mr. Whittle, uh, Assembly Member Whittle. Please do not cross the border. This is not the place for those kind of uh, tactics, and I will not allow that uh, uh, in, in uh, this, this uh, Assembly Chamber. Are you Can joking, we move Mr. on? Chairman. I'm going to move on from here. Can I invite- Chair, uh, point of order. Chair, point of order. Yes, Assembly Member Arnold. Yes, I, I would like some advice because I wish to name Assembly Member Whittle and I would like some advice on that process and ask that we put a vote so that he be removed from the chamber unless he apologises for um, the statement that he has just made regarding the beliefs of the London As Labour Assembly members. Um, I, I would like some advice on that. That is, I, you say uh, he's up to the line. I say he's crossed the line. Crossed the line where exactly? Here, here. Assembly Member Whittle, I will understand. allow you to speak when uh, it is appropriate. Let Assembly Member Arnold finish. I'm going to then take advice and then we will proceed on that basis. I'm chairing the meeting. Please uh, do show that respect and wait for your turn. Thank you. 2.10 relates to members' conduct in meetings. Uh, it indicates that the Mayor, Assembly members and co-opted members of committees shall treat each other, members of GLA staff and other persons with respect and comply with their obligations under the GLA statutory code of conduct. If, in the Chair's opinion, any member or the Mayor, one, persistently disregards the Chair's rulings, two, behaves improperly or offensively, or three, willfully obstructs the meeting's business, then the chair or another member may move that the named member not be further heard or that the member name shall immediately leave the meeting if the motion is seconded uh, and put to the vote and determined without discussion. So uh, sending orders leave that matter to the chair uh, as to whether they are of the view that um, the behaviour is such uh, that it requires that procedure to be invoked, chair. Assembly member Whittle. Uh, reflecting on what you have said, which I do deem to be if, uh, offensive, are you prepared to withdraw your comments and apologise for your conduct? Do you, could you explain to me the particularly uh, supposedly offensive lines? Do you say that I lack patriotism because I'm a Labour Party member? Well, I think it's a very, very fair comment. I was talking about the Labour Party. Chair, and the way offended. Right now. Really it, it isn't a fair comment. It is an absolutely and fair comment on the way, uh, judging on the record of the Labour Party no. over the past 10 years. Look, no. 
Oh, Assembly member, yeah. look, you, you, you really, you know, they, this, uh, I hope that you can really uh, come to a reasonable uh, uh, kind of uh, thinking Hang in on. terms of no. the mayor, the mayor, whatever strategy, whatever is put forward is in his capacity, not as a Labour Party member, as the elected mayor of London. Well, and therefore to attack the him I was and, about and attack the party person. is totally inappropriate. Can you please be reasonable and uh, withdraw your comments or apologise? You're not saying that the Labour Party is a, shows any particular patriotism, so I will not withdraw the comment. OK, I second the motion then. Chair, he's yep. repeated it three times. We should, we should act, Chair, because he keeps repeating the comments he made previously and yeah. he's definitely not apologising. Uh, uh, absolutely, and I've already seconded yeah. Jeanette, so now we're fighting uh, uh, Assemblymember Sohoto to second Jeanette. This is disgraceful. He should be removed. Some Ooh. of our relatives died fighting for this country. Oh, Some Ooh. of our relatives have, have expressed the highest levels of patriotism. How dare you? How dare you? I would say, how dare you tank tinker with British history and memorials and statues? Look, I'm going to take a vote on this, <laughs> and then... then Right. Uh, I'm giving you last final opportunity to reflect on your comments, apologize for what you have said, which, I, which is very clearly not acceptable for, 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 for the Le London government, which is what we are. It was a political, okay? Mr. Chairman, Chairman, it was a political remark. No, Chair, you're no, giving him the opportunity. It was a political remark, and it look, is not right, aimed at right. any particular individual officer. Right. right. In that case, I'm going to put it to vote okay. uh, Chairman. To, Chairman, to the Assembly members. Sorry? Chairman, sorry, sorry, this is Assembly Member Bacon. Before you do that, um, this is a slightly dangerous precedent because we are effectively ruling out free speech. I am uh, respectful of your ruling, um, and I would ask you, perhaps you could offer a compromise, which is that Assembly Me Member Whittle withdraw that comment. Uh, rather than withdraw and apologise, because by doing that, you're forcing him into a corner he can't get out of. I have offered that both to him. Are you prepared to withdraw your comments? Look, I'm trying to be as helpful for, for well, to, 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 to sort of maintain the respect and dignity of this chamber, of this authority, and, and therefore, last opportunity, are you prepared to withdraw your comments? Withdraw as opposed to apologise. 